I have, uh, I have uh, Quincy on the line. He's the blogger from uh, Vitamin Q, and uh, he had some questions. Yeah, Can please. Can you hear me, Quincy? Q, are you there? Hello? God, I must have lost him. Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, I have, uh, I have uh, Mr. Gregory here. You can go ahead and ask your question. God bless you. Dick Gregory, how are you? It's great to talk to you. You know, my question for this, you know, I am a blogger here in New Orleans, and, uh, you know, sometimes we, I have to talk very frankly. And I think that's one reason why I, I kind of gravitate towards you as one of the, you know, the elders or the mentors, per se, because you will say what needs to be said without um, too much consideration for the status quo of the, you know, the black narrative as we describe it, you know. Yes. Um, that conservative messiah complex that we have sometimes, you know, where it kind of puts you on the outside of that homogenous thought. And I just wanted to know, do, do you ever regret standing away from the fold sometimes, or would you have attacked it differently if you had it all to do over again? No, let, let me tell you something. I didn't start out to do this. You know, it's like your hair grow. If you could feel it growing, you'd go crazy. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I just, one by one by bit, I was reading the white paper. You know, he can't see me, can he? No, he can't. No, we well, can't. I'm holding up a picture of Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. On the front page of the Life magazine. In this, he's holding the gun they say he used to kill Kennedy and the pistol he used to shoot the cop. If you look at the body shatter, it's going backwards behind him. If you look at the nose shadow, it's coming frontward. Then when you look at it, that's a dubbed picture. That's a head dubbed on the body. Yes. Now, when you, when, when you have something like this that, that the government perpetrates, and then you start seeing all the other stuff they doing, and then you start saying, how do you get over it? How do you get, and so I just started off like, uh, I, I had a, a piece of paper here I was going to show you. So, oh, here, here's, here's, this might be better. Mm -hmm. Better, 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 better. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. We have, of, we have a bunch of papers here, all these researchers that uh, through it. Here, 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 here. Listen to this now. I ran for president mm -hmm. in 19... 68, okay? Now this is the Wall Street Journal, hmm? December, uh, November the 7th, that was the Friday after the Tuesday. Wall Street Journal now. They go on and say, electric computers goof, give Gregory nine million votes. They had to shut the computers down because it was showing Gregory as president-elect. Why? Because I'm getting nine million votes out of Pennsylvania. No, no. Whoever hooked the machine up, that was supposed to go to Nixon. In some kind of way, they messed up and it came to me. They do this every election. Mm. Y'all go to war and fight and die for your right to vote. So I'm saying to you, pull it up. The, what's horrible about this, no other paper ran this, but the Wall Street Journal, not the Philadelphia paper, not the New York Times, nothing but that. So think about that. They can do it. Anybody they want to win, they can do that. Yes. And, and you know, that is, that's kind of how I felt. I told somebody that. I was like, you know, I, sometimes it makes you want to scream out only because you know if, it, if they shot you in the street right now, that your own people wouldn't speak out, they'd be too scared to speak. Yeah, but well, hey, that fear, fear. I mean, it was a time I was like that. <laughs> I mean, no, me. <laughs> you serious? Hey, man. When I was a little boy, I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared of the mightiest government. I was scared of poodles. I was scared of dogs, scared man. Of dogs. dogs bit me 14 times. You know, they can smell fear. And I'm glad you mentioned that. I was at Cell 50 years ago, and I was there this year. And people say, what's the difference? I said, fear. 50 years ago, we were scared, we went. And them cops could smell it. This time, they couldn't smell fear. 
they could not smell fear, so they had a smile right. on their face. And let me just say this, when they killed the, the, the three children in Mississippi, I put up $25,000 reward, okay? The FBI, for the first time in the history of the FBI, they put up a $30,000 reward. Never before. It shows you how the universe worked. The white boy that gave it to the FBI to get their money also gave it to me. So, had I not had it, they never would have. So here's what I did. I go to Hawaii. And I hold a press conference and say, Mr. President, the Justice Department, I know where the bodies are. Hmm? And to let you know I know, if those bodies is not earthed tonight under the viaduct, then at 12 noon, I'm going to take a group there and dig them up myself. And they found them. Right. Other than that, it never would happen. Right. And so again, I just say, you know, to get back to, to your question, no, you don't. You know, it's like if you're a pole vaulter and you see a new world's record of 17 feet, it don't start off at 17 feet. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right, right. you work your way up there. And so it's the same thing, it was the same thing with me. When I, when I started off, I didn't have the amount of money I have now to do research. Let me tell you, with me and Victor Kowalski did, we went to a lab in New Jersey and <clears throat> We took 30 white rats. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And we fed them cornflakes to see how long they would live. And we took another 30 white rats and we fed them the boxes that the cornflakes came in. The ones eating the cornflakes were dead in 28 days. When we cut the experiment off, 27 years later, they were still alive. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. The boxes come from a tree. Right. After you take the tree and take it into the box, there's still more nutrition <laughs> in that box than, that corn than it is in the cornflake. <laughs> so again, we thank you very much and, yeah, and you happy well. Sunday. Thank you and so much, y'all. Thank you so much. Have a great day. My mom wanted me to tell you thank you so Please, much. Please, and do me, do me one favor. Of course. Pray. Hear me good now that the truth will come out of what really happened in the train wreck and what really happened in Baltimore. Now let me tell you what's good about these prayers. We're not praying that it was some cons conspiracy. We're praying to the universal God, the truth. Right. That means we're not praying that the cops get, we're just saying that the truth come out mm -hmm. and you can handle it. Right. And if you want to know how much power you have, you join us every day. Not no long prayer. Just a short prayer that the truth will come out. That's all. Every day at 12 noon and call your friends all over. Because, because you see what they're talking about is changing the cops training. If you take a bird dog that's been trained to kill birds, you can train him something else on the way to do. He see a bird, he's going to kill it. Right. That's simple. Thank you, brother. And thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank so you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank All you. right, thank you. We're going to wrap it up. Hey, we're going to do this again, Quincy. I, uh, I set it up, you know, a better way, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get another uh, interview, a series of interviews going as we kind of go along. But I, I'll touch base later, my man. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you thank you, thank you. All right, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me hurry up and pack up so we can get out of here on time.